Chapter Fourteen of the Hand of Fu Manchu. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Hand of Fu Manchu by Sax Romer. Chapter Fourteen: The Golden Pomegranates. What was it that he cried out? Demanded Nayland Smith abruptly. I was in the sitting room, and it sounded to me like pomegranates. We were bending over Lewis, and for now, the wig removed, Lewis and it proved unmistakably to be, despite the puffy and pallid face. He said, the golden pomegranates, I replied, and laughed harshly. They were words of delirium, and cannot possibly have any bearing upon the manner of his death. I disagree. He strode out into the sitting room. Weymouth was below, supervising the removal of the unhappy prisoner, and together Smith and I stood looking down at the brass box. Suddenly, I propose to attempt to open it said my friend his words came as a complete surprise for what reason and why have you so suddenly changed your mind for a reason which i hope will presently become evident he said and as to my change of mind unless i am greatly mistaken the wily old chinaman from whom i wrested this treasure was infinitely more clever than i gave him credit for being through the open window came faintly to my ears the chiming of big ben the hour was a quarter to two london's pulse was dimmed now and around us that great city slept as soundly as it ever sleeps other sounds came vaguely through the fog and beside nayland smith i sat and watched him at work upon the tulanur box every knob of the intricate design he pushed pulled and twisted but without result the night wore on and just before three o'clock inspector weymouth knocked upon the door i admitted him and side by side the two of us stood watching smith patiently pursuing his task all conversation had ceased when just as the mooted booming of london's clocks reached my ears again and weymouth pulled out his watch there came a faint click and i saw that smith had raised the lid of the coffer weymouth and i sprang forward with one accord and over smith's shoulders peered into the interior there was a second lid of some dull black wood apparently of great age and fastened to it so as to form knobs or handles was an exquisitely carved pair of golden pomegranates they are to raise the wooden lid mr smith cried weymouth eagerly look there is a hollow in each to accommodate the fingers aren't you going to open it i demanded excitedly aren't you going to open it might i invite you to accompany me into the bedroom yonder for a moment he replied in a tone of studied reserve you also weymouth smith leading we entered the room where the dead man lay stretched upon the bed note the appearance of his fingers directed nayland smith i examined the peculiarity to which smith had drawn my attention the dead man's fingers were swollen extraordinarily the index finger of either hand especially being oddly discoloured as though bruised from the nail upward i looked again at the ghastly face then repressing a shudder for the sight was not good to look upon i turned to smith who was watching me expectantly with his keen steely eyes from his pocket he took out a knife containing a number of implements amongst them a hook-like contrivance have you a button-hook petrie he asked or anything of that nature how will this do said the inspector and he produced a pair of handcuffs they were not wanted he added significantly better still declared smith reclosing his knife he took the handcuffs from weymouth and returning to the sitting-room opened them widely and inserted two steel points in the hollows of the golden pomegranates he pulled there was a faint sound of moving mechanism and the wooden lid lifted revealing the interior of the coffer it contained three long bars of lead and nothing else supporting the lid with the handcuffs just pull the light over here petrie said smith i did as he directed look into these two cavities where one is expected to thrust one's fingers weymouth and i craned forward so that our heads came into contact my god whispered the inspector we know now what killed him visible in either little cavity against the edge of the steel handcuff was the point of a needle which evidently worked in an exquisitely made socket through which the action of raising the lid caused it to protrude underneath the lid midway between the two pomegranates as i saw by slowly moving the lamp was a little hollow receptacle of metal communicating with the base of the hollow needles the action of lifting the lid not only protruded the points but also operated the hypodermic syringe note snapped smith but his voice was slightly hoarse he removed the points of the bracelets the box immediately reclosed with no sound other than a faint click god forgive him said smith glancing toward the other room for he died in my stead and dr fu manchu scores an undeserved failure End 
of chapter fourteen